but I do appreciate you guys taking the time to join us. Um, it's great that you're thinking about a BSMS. It's, it's, it's certainly the most bang for your buck for your, your time at WPI. Um, we were doing this face-to-face -face on campus, but uh, we'll make do with this. Uh, I think the way we'll, we'll kind of walk through this, um, we we'll to keep it, uh, I'll give you the details. When you have questions, please just type them into the chat. Sandy will monitor that and we'll leave plenty of room at the end to make sure we get all your questions answered. So um, with that, let me just uh, jump right in. So BS in anything, MS in business. Um, basically what this means is that the, the BS MS combination works for everybody. Um, we can, we've made it work for all different majors across WPI. Um, we'll kind of talk about through the presentation why the MS in business makes sense for just about everyone. point where I would go to the next screen. Hey Sandy, I'm not sure why my controls aren't working with the... Uh... Um, Let me... Let me try this one. Okay, here we go. So um, the, the Foise Business School, which I hope you're all familiar with, um, one of the top business schools in the country, so hopefully you'll take advantage of it um, in some fashion while you're here at WPI. This is basically our mission, and, and, and it, it spells out the word inspire, but it, it's, it's really, we put this in here to demonstrate that the Foise Business School um, fits well with the focus of WPI as a university. So we're really aimed at that that intersection of business and technology. Um, so inspiring leaders at the nexus of science, engineering and business with project-based purpose-driven learning and innovative research to achieve impactful results and pursue excellence that drives progress. Um, so that's, that's the foundation of everything that we do in the Foise Business School. Those two bottom uh, logos there, AACSB is the highest level of business school accreditation. Obviously we have that at WPI. Only about 5% of business schools worldwide have that level of accreditation. Uh, but we also have the ABET, which is the accrediting body for engineering and technology accreditation within FOISI. So both the highest level of business and technical accreditation, which I think is important for certainly a STEM-based business school like ourselves. Um, so why an MS in business? Um, so odds are, you know, regardless of, of, of what you're studying now, you could be a scientist, you could be an engineer, you could be, you know, a business grad be working for business when you graduate you could join that business you know as a scientist working on the bench or an engineer working in the field but um, if you can understand the business side of that equation it makes you so much more valuable than just the straight tech guys who, who don't understand how what they do impacts the larger operation they may not know how to read a financial statement what have you if you can wear both those hats and obviously you need the technology side and you're getting that as WPI undergrads um, because technology certainly drives business these days, but you need to be able to wear both of those hats. So that's what that's what employers are looking for. That's what makes you um, extremely valuable, gives you that competitive advantage, puts you on a fast track to leadership, and and with that comes a higher starting salary and and a, a faster career progression. So that's why we think the MS in business makes sense for just about everybody. Um, when we talk about MS degrees in business, we have a wide range. We're going to focus on that first one today, the, the MS in Man, which has an MBA track as well. I'll talk about that in a, in a few. Um, but I wanted to make you aware that we've also got um, a number of more specialized MS programs that this also works with. So we've got, um, you know, an MS in business analytics, so kind of making sense of and then strategic business decisions based on all the data that's out there in your analysis of that. We've got them in IT, we've got user experience, kind of that human technology interface thing, um, marketing and innovation, operations analytics, and then supply chain management. So all very relevant, cutting edge, STEM focused MS programs. Again, any of these work with any major. Um, the, uh, the differences between these uh, that, that, that does come into play when we talk BSMS is the length. Um, and we'll talk about how degrees fit uh, in a few slides, but the MS in Management, the 30 credit program, 
most graduate business courses at WPI are three credits in length. So basically 10 courses, 30 credits for the MS in management. The business analytics and the IT are 33 credits or 11 courses, and the others are all um, 36 credit or 12 course programs, okay? All right, so here's the MS in management again, the one I wanna focus on. So the reason this one works for the vast majority of our science and engineering students is that it gives you a solid business foundation. So it covers the various functional areas of, of a business. So accounting, finance, business law, you know, IT, marketing, leadership, operations, et cetera. Um, and also gives you three electives. So you still have room within your MS in management to, to specialize, to focus your program. Um, what a lot of students will do is they'll take a couple courses. So we've got, again, you've got three electives. So of the 10 courses, three of those are electives. Students will often do two graduate courses in their undergrad major, which they can get then count toward their BS core um, and uh, use those as MS and management electives as well. So that's one of the places we can double count. We'll get more into that in a second. Well, you can often sort of get some graduate level coursework in your own discipline as well. Um, as you uh, as you do the MS in management. And then this is also what we call a pre-MBA um, program, which means that if you do the MS in management, well, we back, excuse me, back up a step that we don't do a, uh, sorry, you know what? Uh, my kitty cat is, is, is coming to say hello. So for what it's worth, this is Oliver. I'll try to get him away. He's, he's kind of loud and he's deaf. And so he, uh, he crashes a lot of these Zoom sessions, but now you've, now you've met Oliver. Um, I would tell him to shut up, but he can't hear, so it's of no use. But the, anyway, pre-MBA, so what it means is, so we don't do a, a BS MBA, um, because with an MBA, when employers are hiring MBAs, they really have an expectation that you've got some professional experience to go along with the degree. So um, what, we, what we've set up instead is, the MS in management with a pathway to the MBA. And basically what that means is you do the MS in management, you go work for a minimum of two years. Then if you want to come back to WPI for the MBA, you can count all seven of those courses that are listed there by title. And I know there's eight by title there effectively, but if you look at those first two, the ACC 500, 502, one's a one credit, one's a two credit. They run sequentially within the same semester. So we basically count them as one. So you basically count all 21 of those credits that are listed by title there toward the MBA when you come back after working a minimum of two years, and then you're basically you're halfway to an MBA. So that's why we call this the pre-MBA pathway. Um, you know, across the, the, the course of a career, um, an MBA frankly carries more weight than an MS in anything. Um, so the ultimate prize may be the MBA, and this again gets you there, but also allows you to enter the workforce with a graduate degree. Um, and again, starting at a higher salary and a faster career progression. So it's a, it's a win from all different directions. Um, you know, for what it's worth, uh, when we look at WPI alumni across the board, so not just Foise Business School, but 80% of WPI undergrad alums at some point earn a graduate credential. And the, uh, the most prominent one of those is the MBA. And the reason for that is that, again, while you may start your career as an engineer or scientist, what have you, before long, you're going to start managing other people. WPI students' careers move pretty fast. Um, and the reason for that is you're picking up the skills that employers want while on undergrad. So you're learning how to move fast and how to get things done at, on deadline with the seven week terms that, you know, you may, you may sometimes hate the seven week terms and how fast they move, but it's giving you, it's really positioning you for success when you get out of here. Um, you're learning how to work in teams, how to both be a good teammate and a good team leader through the project based curriculum. Um, that's a, that's a skill that's always at the top of the list for what employers are looking for. So again, your careers are going to move pretty fast. And while, you know, your engineering skills, your science skills may get you in the door with the company, before long, you're managing, um, you know, a project, you're managing a unit, you're managing, you're managing a division. And that's when ultimately your business skills are going to take precedent over the technical skills that maybe got you with the company in the first place. So, so again, that's why your business degree, um, makes so much sense and why being able to wear both the business and the tech hat really sets you up for uh, for future success. Um, so let's do a little WPI math and sort of show you logistically how this all fits. 
So you know, regardless of what major you're in, you need 45 classes to graduate. Okay, you all have those tracking sheets for your major that says, you know, here are the choices you have. So we've got the general distribution requirements, which make up 15 of those 45 courses. The humanities and arts, the social science, the PE, the ITP, and, you, and most, uh, most majors have three free electives. So 15 courses that everybody takes. Then you've got 30 courses in your major, um, which includes the MTP. So 45 classes to graduate. Okay? Um, so then just building that out. So we've got four terms a year, three courses a term. So that's 48 slots, which is already three more than you need to graduate. So assuming you're not an hour and a whole bunch of stuff, you got extra room built in without ever overloading. Uh, you're allowed to overload once a semester. So um, the semester is kind of the key way to think about BSMS because um, think of AB term as your fall semester and CD term as your spring semester. Um, and that's how they calculate the overload as well. So you can overload once a semester. So you could overload you know, in B term and C term because they're in different semesters. So you've really got eight potential overload slots a year. Maybe we cut that back a little bit because people don't usually overload in their freshman year. So let's make that six overload slots, which would give you then 54 slots. So nine more than the 45 required for the BS. A lot of you guys come in with AP credit, which gives you additional capacity. So bottom line, the reason we're sort of doing this is, is just to show you how much room you've got to get other stuff done. Um, it is, it, you know, it, it's pretty common that students, you know, are picking up at least a minor, double major, what have you. And MS is so much of a better credential than any of those double majors or minors. So you should certainly be thinking about that. And obviously you're here, so you are thinking about it, which is great. But in terms of bang for the buck and you hear people talking about more and four and things like that, I mean, you hear President Leshen talking about that all the time. The ultimate more and four is to graduate in four years with both a BS and an MS without paying any additional tuition. And if we start planning that early enough, we, we can make that happen. Okay, so the way the business, the, the, the way things work in the business school, we have somewhat different rules than the rest of the university. Um, because we have that different accreditation, the AACSB. Um, AACSB is a little bit of a stricter threshold than the, the rest of the university accreditation. So we have some different rules that we need to abide by. Um, but basic rules, you can begin taking graduate courses uh, while you're an undergrad as early as fall of your junior year. Um, so basically what we do is, you know, most of you guys are going away for ITP uh, in, in one of your junior terms. So that kind of eliminates whatever semester that term falls in as a time to take graduate business courses because graduate business courses run on a semester calendar. So a typical grad business course will run um, one night a week, you know, say Tuesday nights from 6 to 9 p.m. for a 14 week semester. So say we're in the fall, it would span your A and B terms. We still take that term break in the middle so it fits well with your undergrad calendar. A um, lot of, we, we've seen huge growth in the BSMS, so a lot of undergrads taking graduate courses. Uh, because they're at night, they don't conflict with your undergrad schedule, so it, so it works really well. There's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you sequence your grad courses. So if you're, you know, if you're playing a sport, if you're in other activities where you have certain practice nights or times, you can usually work around that with the um, graduate courses. We, we also do um, courses in what we call a blended format, which are largely online with a couple residencies each semester which are kind of full day on campus activities um, but with those blended courses that also gives you additional flexibility um, to fit in your grad courses so again you can start taking courses graduate business courses as early as fall of your junior year but you have to be admitted into an ms program before you're eligible to start taking grad business courses okay so that's 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 different than the rest of wpi where you could sign up for a graduate course you know as a freshman if you wanted to in computer science or mechanical or what have you. To take a graduate business course, you need to be admitted into a graduate program. It doesn't have to be a graduate business program, but it needs to be a graduate degree program, okay? Um, so, and this is key, this next bullet here. Uh, up to 40% of your MS credits can be used to satisfy both BS and MS degree requirements. Um, and added to that, a graduate course, when it counts back toward your BS, counts back as a course and a half. And here I'm really talking about three credit graduate courses, which are most grad courses at WPI, although ME does a number of two credit courses, which basically count back as the equivalent of one undergrad course. But since we're talking about business school stuff now, um, a three credit graduate course counts back as an undergrad course and a half. 
So how that's key is that, so if we'll, here we're sort of using the MS in management as the example. So if you recall from an earlier slide, 10 courses, 30 credits. So four of those 10 courses can count back toward your BS requirements. And because they count back as a course and a half, it eliminates in a perfect world, six undergrad courses. Okay, so we're traded four graduate courses for six undergrad courses, because again, we're counting back uh, a grad course as a course and a half. So think of it as, um, you know, a, a lot, one place we typically double count is with your free electives. So say you're, a, say you're a mechanical engineering major, you've got those three free electives. We take two of those business core courses, count them back as all three free electives. Because if you think of your undergrad courses as three credits a piece, the grad courses are four and a half credits a piece, it's still nine credits. It's just two four and a half versus three threes. Um, now, obviously, we're in a room, I could see you nodding your head on that or shaking your head if you don't understand, but hopefully you're with me. If you're not, uh, we can talk about that in a chat or with questions at the end. But it, it's, it's relatively straightforward. So usually the way we do the double counting, if you're not an undergrad major in the Foise Business School, we're usually using free electives within your bachelor's degree to count graduate business courses. And then we're taking two grad courses from your own discipline to count as two of the three electives within the MS in management. Okay. So all majors have that, you know, again, that core of really 27 courses that you take in your major and they're split up in different ways. But, you know, say we're looking at, uh, We'll stick with mechanical as the example. And there's a, the, I know you're required to take a certain number, 4,000 level or higher grad courses, or excuse me, undergrad courses. So we take two 500 level grad courses, count them as uh, both MSMG electives as well as toward your BS. Um, all right. And then, um, okay, so the 21 credits that your undergrad tuition covers. So the way to think about that, um, you know how as an undergrad, you basically play a flat pay a, a flat tuition for each semester. Um, so each undergrad course is worth three credits a piece. All right, so you now you usually take three courses A term, three courses B term, that's a full-time load, but you can overload once a semester. So that gives you room for a seventh course. So seven times three credits is where that 21 credits comes from. Um, now remember that the grad courses are four and a half credits. So um, say you have a semester where you've got two undergrad courses A term, two undergrad courses B term. So that's four undergrad courses, three credits a piece. So 12 undergrad credits, you're paying for 21. So you've got nine left, which would be enough for two four and a half credit grad courses. Okay. So that's basically the equation we do for each semester. So once you decide you want to explore the BS MS in more detail, um, what we do is we sit down with you, we say, you know, what are your next two years look like? Because again, we're kind of planning junior year forward. When are you going away for your IQP? What do you have left for your BS requirements? What can we double count? Um, and then just semester by semester, we slot in the 10 graduate business courses. If you get to a point, um, which a lot of students, you know, when you're, if, if you're making good progress or not NR and stuff, um, you often get to senior year and all you've got left is your MQP. So if that's the case, and we do the MQP in the traditional ABC term format, that leaves you room for seven grad courses in just your senior year alone. So we only need to fit, um, you know, the other courses in, we only need to fit three other courses into junior year. We've also got two summers we can use, including this summer coming up, if you're like a rising junior right now, we can use the summer before your junior year and the summer before your senior year to take grad courses. If the goal is to get this done um, within the four years of your BS. Um, sometimes we have to employ the summer. Sometimes if we start planning early enough, we can get it done in four years without ever taking a summer course. So it all sort of depends on your individual situation. Um, okay, so the next thing you should be aware of is that we have this alumni tuition incentive program, which basically says that when you're a WPI BS alum, when you come back as a graduate student, whether full-time or part-time, WPI gives you 20% off your tuition. Um, so a way to think about this is say, um, you know, say you're a junior now, um, you haven't started taking any grad courses, you're, so you're basically a rising senior, you haven't started taking any grad courses yet, um, but you've got plenty of room next year to fit in, say, five grad courses. So we could do five grad courses in your senior year. Um, you graduate with your bachelor's degree in, in this example, May of 21. Um, so you've got to the MS in management. Um, 
So you've got five grad courses done by the time you finish your BS. In May of 21, you come back August of 21 as a full-time grad student, take the remaining five, discounts you're basically paying for four of the five okay and you finish your graduate degree in um december of 21 so you're only really out of the workforce for an additional semester and then in january of, of 22 you're starting um your job with a grad credential again presumably at a higher level and a higher salary and on a faster career progression so um, just again something to be aware of the alumni tuition center again works whether you're coming back full or part-time um, it often helps kind of bridge that gap between when employer's tuition benefit often kicks in. Most large employers have some form of tuition benefit for students going back to graduate school. It's a great thing to take advantage of, but they often have a waiting period um, of, you know, you gotta be an employer there for two or three years before that benefit takes effect. Um, so, you know, you can wait for it if you need to, um, but if you wanna keep making progress, if you haven't completed your degree within your four years, um, that's when the alumni tuition incentive benefit kicks in. Okay, so just a heads up on that. Um, so how to get started. The application stuff is really straightforward for WPI undergrads. So um, go to our business school webpage, uh, business.wpi.edu, the grad admissions button, hit that, you'll see then a red apply button, put you into the, the grad application. Um, basically what you're doing, you're filling out the online form, which is really just contact info, download your resume, use a personal statement in there saying why you're looking at the BSMS. Um, and uh, that'll take you an hour, frankly, the, the online application part. If, you're on, if your cumulative grade point average at WPI is 3.0 or higher, you don't have to take a GRE or a GMAT. Um, for, for those of you who may not be familiar with those, that's basically the graduate version of the SAT. But we can, so we can save you that, that, that standardized test step if, you're, if your uh, cumulative GPA is 3.0 or higher. Um, and you only need one letter of recommendation for, the MS, for, the, for BSMS students. So, um, again, you're filling out the online application, one letter of recommendation. We weighed the test if you're over 3.0. We already have your transcripts. There's no application fee for you. So again, the application is very straightforward. Our admissions team is great. They turn it around in you know, a week max. So you'll get an answer right away, um, and then we can start planning. Um, it's, uh, it's not too late to start taking courses this summer if you'd like. Even if you haven't applied yet, we should still start talking about it. Because as you know, you've got that 50% discount on summer tuition for this summer. That's not going to last forever, but certainly this summer under our current circumstances, great thing to take advantage of and maybe start making some progress um, toward a BSMS. Okay, so your next move, um, reach out to me. Um, there's my email address. Um, what I like to do is if you can come in with a, you know, sort of a, um, an up-to-date undergrad tracking sheet, uh, I've been doing this nonstop since we kind of went online, you know, six weeks ago, or however long this has been. Um, and uh, just meeting with students and, and planning out their curriculums. And, uh, you know, again, it, it works for everybody, but everybody's circumstance is different. So we kind of walk you through your different options. Um, and really, that's kind of what, in part, the BSMS is all about. And the reason we're pushing this so hard now is that we know that. Uh, you know, internships are tougher to come by with those of you who are continuing students, for those of you who are graduating, you know, maybe your start dates for your jobs, if you accepted one, has been pushed back. You know, we, we have heard, unfortunately, of a few offers that have been rescinded. I know it's tougher looking for a job right now. So certainly a, a, a spending the time in graduate school while the world sort of sorts itself out is a great way to, to, to make constructive use of that time, better yourself, get a better credential, and, um, and then really give yourself an advantage when you are jumping jumping back in the workforce. So that's um that's your next move. Shoot me an email and we'll um we'll figure it out. Here's the cheesy little end slide. So this should really be the question slide. So that's kind of where we are now. I'm gonna leave this up so you know how to get to me. But um so Sandy, in terms of questions, I haven't been paying attention. Do we have some questions that have been typed in or do we want to just open it up to students and, and they can sort of fire away verbally? Uh, no questions in the chat right now. I just also want to mention that we do have um, Amy Trachimus, who's with the admissions folks, so she can answer any admissions questions, as can Norm and I. Um, I'm Sandy Wellingoff, MBA director. And so how about this? If you have a question, why don't you unmute yourself? So I have a quick question. Um, does any of the undergrad class we're taking in our major will double count 
or we have to be we have to take grad level course to be able to double count as a grad credit yeah um, that's a great question and that's another thing that's different in the business school uh due to our different level of accreditation is that uh, it is a one-way street in how we can double count so you're right that in most majors you can take 4,000 level undergrad courses with prior approval count them forward to your master's requirements we don't do that in the business school we can't do that in the business school so um, while you can still double the, the 40 percent double counting between degrees doesn't change but it's only graduate courses counting back toward the bs as opposed to any undergrad courses counting forward toward the ms thank you thanks hey um while i'm thinking of it we'll send this um this PowerPoint out to you just so you'll have it for future reference if you want to, you know, discuss it with your parents or anything else, um, or if you just want to review. Uh, and, 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 you know, and also if your parents have, have questions uh, about how this all works, feel free to give them my contact info. I've talked to parents a ton of times about this stuff and how it, how it fits. I have a quick question. I uh, appreciate you guys doing this. Thank you. Cool. Um, I know I've met, already met with you numerous times, Norm, um, yeah. to kind of get my schedule going and everything like that. Um, so to apply um, for this, when I try to, when I try to go do the application, um, which I'm actually just, I just logged onto it now. Will I be able to then um, try to sign up for classes for this coming year? being junior year after accepted? Yeah, that's a good question, David. So yeah, what, um, yes, you will be able to. Um, and so grad, grad registration is a little bit different than undergrad registration. I know that, you know, as undergrads, you, you're kind of used to, you know, it goes live on a certain day at 7 a.m. and it's a mad scramble to, to grab a spot in class. It doesn't really work that way for graduate classes. Graduate students tend to register um, sort of a little more spread out and, and, and particularly with the part-time students, they don't register to, you know, a week or so before the semester begins. So it's not as, as to jump into a grad course right away. Um, but yes, you'll be able to register for fall classes by applying now. Um, but the, the one point that, that David brings up that's important is that Banner always sees you as an undergrad until you complete your BS requirements, you kind of file for graduation and stuff. So a lot of BMS, BS, MS students, who do both degrees in four years, never actually get coded in the system as graduate students. And all that means is that you have to email me or Sandy or Stacia, who are all on this call, to get you registered for your graduate business courses. Banner blocks all undergrads from registering for grad business courses because of those requirements we have that you gotta be accepted to a BSMS program. And while you do get an attribute attributed to you um, when you get accepted into the MS program, it's not something that Banner's sensitive enough to pick up. So that's why you just have that extra step of emailing me or Sandy or Stacia and saying, I want to take these courses in fall of 20 or these in spring of 21. In fact, these past couple of weeks that I've been doing, it feels like nothing but that, getting students registered for their courses to be SMSs. So it's just an additional step on your part. You're basically registering through me rather than the registrar's office. Um, not a big deal, but just a, a heads up. Thank you. I'll probably be sending you an email for one of them anyways, because I was trying to register for the ACC classes. Yep. Um, and I got the error on Banner Web when I went exactly. to do that this week. Okay. Yeah. Shoot me an email. I'll put you right in. Awesome. Thank you. If we apply right now, um, are we able to take the classes in the summer or should we just take a If we are interested in taking a class in the summer, should we just register for the class and then wait and hope that yeah, it what, works retroactively? Yeah, and Amy, feel free to jump in if you'd like. We uh, we can we we only do admissions for the fall and spring. So, but yeah, if you want, if you're applying for the fall, we're more than happy to have you take summer courses. Um, we should just just um, email me the course you the course or courses you'd like to take in the summer, and, and I'll put you in. Okay. Thank you. I would like to make one quick point. So if you guys are um, applying as a BS to MS, the way, and again, kind of to piggyback what Norm was saying about accreditation, the if you have that 3.0 GPA or higher, the application won't automatically waive 
the standardized test requirement or the video interview portion of the application. It has to be mandatory for every applicant, but I can manually waive that. So if you know that you're, you've applied, you know you're missing that standardized test because you qualify with your GPA, you just have to shoot um, business at wpi.edu an email and I can waive that within a few minutes um, and get that taken care of. But just know it's something that we as an admission staff have to manually waive and we're not alerted to it in the system. So sometimes we don't catch it right away. But if you send us an email, we'll take care of it right away. Yeah, so if you find you haven't heard from admissions in you know a week or so, because they're really they're, they're very fast, so then just shoot them an email, and that's probably what the holdup is. Yeah. And I'll take care of it. So, yeah. so again, business at wpi.edu. Hi. So I have another question. So I'm interested in the master in management and also the operational management program. Can you speak mm -hmm. to the difference on like, what's the difference between the two? Yeah, so the, the operations analytics and management program um, is one of what we call a specialized master's program. So what that means is that it's a deep dive into operations analytics and management. So you've got, there's still some good flexibility within the program, but you'll notice all the courses that are part of that are, for, are in the same area. So in um, you know, focused on some level of, of, of operations, business analytics, um, as opposed to the MSM management, which gives you accounting, finance, marketing, um, some operations as well. But it's sort of, so the MS at management and the MBA are broader foundation programs. So they, they, they span the different business disciplines, whereas the specialized master's program, like the, the MS in operations analytics that you're talking about, um, is a deep dive into the particular focus of the MS program. So it's kind of the breadth versus the depth is, is a good way to think about it. The MSOEM, great program. It, it's um, 36 credits, so 12 courses. Um, there, and, and we still do the same double counting. Oh, and another thing I should mention is that regardless of what, um, what master's level degree you do, if you want to come back for an MBA, there's still some double counting we can do. Um, WPI basically allows three courses or nine credits is a better way to say it, nine credits to double count between two master's level programs. The reason we can do 21 from MS in management to MBA is because um, four of those seven courses in the MS in management core, what we call foundation courses. So we just, we just sort of lop those off in the, in the MBA. So it makes for a shorter MBA. Um, but essentially, the, the result to you is that you're getting credit for seven of your MS and management courses when you go that path. But with a lot of the other programs, you're really getting credit for the other business programs, usually getting credit for anywhere from three to five, depending on how many of those foundation courses are part of the MS program. When you're doing like, say you do a master's in mechanical and you come back to WPI for an MBA, we can take two of your master or six of your master's credits and count them as the six MBA free elective credits. Um, but that's probably about the most double counting you get there. But just to quote, sort of, I know this is a long answer to a short question, but really just to show you that there is some double counting we can do regardless of the, of the graduate combinations of degrees. I was wondering if you could talk about the different concentrations for management that you could do. Yeah, I mean, it's really wide open um, because you, so, You've got three electives, so that's where you form the concentration. If you're doing a concentration in the business school, it's usually around, and this is sort of where it ties back into the MS programs, because those reflect our faculty strengths and our focus areas. So you can do concentrations in business analytics, in IT management, in user experience, in operations management, in digital marketing, in entrepreneurship or technology-based entrepreneurship. So those are sort of the, the big concentration areas in the business school. But you can really, I mean, again, because two of those three electives you can take in your own major, you can kind of do, like we've got a number of civil engineering students who will do kind of a construction project management focus. So they'll do a couple of those courses will be graduate level civil courses. Maybe they take the project management course with us in the business school. Um, you know, you can do it in, uh, you know, we've got a lot of robotics students who do it. They can kind of do robotics management. So um, it's really sort of the ultimate customization because two of those, again, three electives. One can be anything from the business school. 
and the other two can be outside of the business school, whatever you want, any graduate courses at WPI. You guys want to see the cat again? <laughs> yes. When uh, filling out the application, I know it has an area where it says the BSMS programs where you ought to put out your like plan of study. How do you know which courses you are going to like double count and like which ones will double count? Yeah, that's where the, the, the meeting with me kind of comes into play. But my, my advice to, you know, particularly when you're, when you're young, cause I'll, you know, I talked to fresh about the BSMS as well. And my advice to them at this point is really try to keep your free elective slots open. Um, that's kind of the main thing. Uh, and, and, um, figure out what, two graduate courses in your own major um, you can slot into your regular BS requirements but you know again the best way to do it is schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and we'll map it out okay it is very dependent on kind of where you are in your program and what your undergrad major is but again it works for everybody okay yeah I know I know we've met before a couple times but I think we'll just kind of have to readjust a little bit so that way I could figure that out to uh, do the application but I'll send you an email okay Thank you. Well, if we're thinking that we're good for now, um, we don't need to, to keep you any longer. Um, we will again email you out the uh powerpoint um and again thank you very much for taking the time hope you guys are all doing well and that d terms wrapping up okay for everybody um look forward to hopefully seeing everybody back on campus in the fall but uh any questions that you didn't get answered today shoot me an email and we'll get them answered right away and uh i look forward to hearing more from you guys so again thank you enjoy the rest of the day and uh and take care thank you thank you